even easier. So I'll look for those if there are no questions. No problem. Yeah, for those who are just joining, um, we're recording and closed captioning, and uh, I see Lu Yen's on, so that's great. Uh, if there are any questions, feel free to ask. I'm just looking for some various things on my computer while we're waiting. Um, I guess maybe I'll, I'll uh, bite and ask the, the first question. Um, so uh, fringe rate, what are the general orders of magnitude we would expect? Or like a general scale, um, if that question makes sense. Well, um, let's see, uh, how can we reason through that? I mean, the, the resolution of a radar is typically on the order of, let's say, five meter, one meter, five meter, 10 meters, something like that, right? So the range spacing from one pixel to the next would be on the order of meters, right? So that's the D row part that you would be working with. And then from a fringe perspective, a phase perspective, you know that if you're going to be able to do interferometry, you need to be able to resolve the phase unambiguously, right? So the fastest that the phase can go from one pixel to the next in an interferogram would be what? it would be two pi, right? Because if it went faster than two pi, actually even pi perhaps, but if it, if it went too fast, then you wouldn't know, you wouldn't be able to unwrap the phase to be able to say from one pixel to the next, you have a continuous phase. It may have jumped by a whole ambiguity and you wouldn't know it because it's- So one, la one wavelength? One friend, yeah, exactly. Or, and because it's a two-way thing, it's probably half a wavelength in the case of INSAR. Right, because it's two times two pi over lambda times the, the differential distance. So the the sort of the maximum fringe rate you would expect would be on the order of two pi divided by the resolution, which is like five meters or something like that. So that would be sort of the maximum, and you would expect fringe rates less than that for a given if it's a five meter resolution thing. So you can get different rates depending on what the resolution might be. So are you getting numbers like that when you do the calculation for the homework? Um, you know, the numbers are quite a bit smaller than I expected. So I think I've goofed somewhere, but I think trying it with fresh eyes this morning and your tip might be, uh, might get me closer. Well, I mean, let's um, think about it sure. though. This, yeah. the wavelength for this is, 24 centimeters, it's an L-band system. And you were given a system that's at 600 kilometer. You're talking about the homework problem, I assume. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the baseline length and angle, the baseline length is 100 meters. So what would be the critical baseline for an L-band interferometer at that 
length. So at the critical baseline, that's when the fringe rate gets to be basically two pi per, uh, per cycle. We can go back up to the formula for the critical baseline, which is somewhere up here. Oh, that, is that in the correlation notebook? Oh, I don't think, no, it's, I think it's the NSAR notebook. I think. Right. Um, I think it's actually in the correlation notebook. Which may oh, be yeah, ba baseline correction forms uh, to be above that. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to know the critical baseline, um, that, that the critical baseline exists to solve this problem. So that's why, oh. but it helps uh, to have that formula in front of you. So the baseline correlation functional forms defines that critical baseline as lambda rho uh, tau theta minus the slope divided by two delta rho in this case. So rho is something like uh, 600 times some divided by some sine of theta. So it's like seven or 800 kilometers. Mm -hmm. And um, rho in this delta rho, what did I say the wave, the bandwidth was? Uh, did I say what the resolution is? I said, Yeah. Or actually, I can share the screen too if that is useful. I don't know if if you have one open. That's interesting. I didn't say what the resolution was. <laughs> well, that's okay because it's the the delta phi d rho. So. Yeah, so anyway, um, the critical baseline for an interferometer that's uh, 24 uh, centimeter wavelength typically is on the order of 10 or 20 kilometers. So if you have a, um, if you have a uh, baseline that's only 100 meters, then you're not going to have a very high fringe rate. So low fringe rates is not a bad thing. In the um, equations, I guess, both for critical and then also for the um, the phase rate or the fringe rate, the, the chi C parameter, I guess, or psi, no, sorry, psi C, is, is that that's zero because we're flat earth? That's right. Okay. That's right. Cool. All right, yeah, I'll take another crack at it. Thank you. Sure. Where is that formula? Yeah, so d phi d rho, d delta phi d rho is just b perp two pi p over lambda b perp over rho tan theta. So you. You can calculate rho from the information for flat earth and b perp you're given and theta you can are you given that yeah you calculate it for the near range and far range so you can calculate that so you have the information you need to get that fringe rate okay <laughs> okay any other questions um yeah uh, i have a question um on downloading data. So um, can you please show me um, where I can have the link for the data from different area of Allos Panzer from ASF? Because from street map um, presented by Harris, he assigns the, the name and the link of the data in Hawaii uh, or Alaska, I, I don't remember exactly, but I want to test different area, but I don't know 
where I can have the link so that I can add to the, uh, the, the, the script. All right, so that was exactly when I had to go to another meeting. So could you share your screen and show me what you're looking for so that I, I didn't uh, quite catch yeah. what link you're looking for? Yeah, um, I, um, I just want to, uh, to look for data in Vietnam, but I think it, it may take time. So you can show me uh, any anywhere convenient for you. Just show me the way I can um, find um, the uh, the link, and I can do myself. Because if I show my screen now, I have to to um, to find the area and show you. So maybe it takes time. I I mean you can show me anywhere uh, convenient for you, and show me how I can have the link. It is okay, and I I can play. Uh, play with my data later. Um, <laughs> you want the link to the Vertex uh, search engine for finding Sentinel data? Is that what you, or ALOS data? I, I lost ALOS data because I I work with um uh with Sentinel before. I I can do that, but I normally download manually to my local uh, local disk and work with ICE. Mm, from the local disk, but in the strip, uh, in in the the, the code, uh, we use link, and I automatically download the data, and I just know how I can have the link. All right, um, let me bring up the notebook and see if I can figure out what you. you I, I still don't quite understand what you want to link to the Vertex search engine. Where you can search for ALOS data. Ah uh, yes. Um, for example, if I want to to work with um, an area in California, yeah, like that. So how can I have the link for the data in the area I am interested in? Um, well, let's see. Stand by. Oh, okay, let me let me show the uh, the script here um, from here and yeah. show you where I need. Okay. Yeah. That would be helpful. Um, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah, it is here in this um, um, in the cell. I think he has already add this link. So he used two image to make an interferon. And it is here in in the study area. So if I change to my study area, how can I have this link? I see what you're saying. All right. So I think what you want to do, you need to find the file where your your frame exists on a server someplace, right? So there's two ways. One is you can see already in cell number five there this uh, Cicera command that you okay. may have studied um, if you did the pre-course would give you, uh, you can define a bounding box and it will return for you um, the various things that you're interested in. Ah, okay. It is what exactly I, I want to ask later. So that um, I understand that it is here. We show our bounding box or study area limitation and the span, time span a spanning time so that Shara will show, show me the list of uh, the link or the list of files and I can download them. That's right? one way. Okay. That will show you not just the ASF uh, pool, but other uh, resources. The other way is you can, uh, if you know your bounding box, I think you can, the way I usually search for data is I go to the uh, ASF vertex search engine 
and I draw a bounding box and I select the sensor of interest. Uh, so maybe you've done that. Have you gone to Vertex before? Somebody, um, said no. that, somebody said they recently changed the name. So let me just make sure that I'm telling you. Hold on a second. How do I exit full screen here? Exit full screen. There we go. Let me see. V E R T E X. Let's see if this still works. It's just spinning, so that doesn't seem to work. Oh, there we go. Yes, okay, so that works. So if you type uh, VER in your as a URL, VERTEX dot D A A C V E R V E R. Here, let me just share my screen. How about okay? Yeah, I think this was uh, usually in previous years we taught this uh, data download section in the class because it was. Um, kind of, I guess, essential for people to get their own data. And uh, we put it in the pre-course material. So this, uh, let's see if we can see this. So it's verte.x.daac.asf.alaska.edu. That brings you to this page. Oops. And, uh, you know, I am by no means an expert at using this tool, but I muddle through it. If you want data in Vietnam. Yes. You would draw a bounding box around that area. And, okay. uh, or you could put in some filters. Filters would be. Uh, I think you can select the sensor type. Oh, sorry, the data set here. So, ALOS Palsar, you select. Yes. How do I cancel that? And then, uh, area of interest, you can e type in a polygon. If you're interested, I think you can just draw a polygon if you want. Um, area of interest. I'm not great at this, as I said, but stop editing the plus. That look right to you? Yes, um, it, it seemed to be very large, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then. I think different frames will be shown. So there's 30,000 files. That... Yeah, because it's very, it's too, too big um, study area. Yeah, different frames and even two tracks. Right. And you can specify. It actually doesn't look like there's that much data. You can specify filters of the type of data. Um, it can be level one, level one point one complex is the it's SLC it's data, which is probably what you want. You could also get raw data if you want. I think that's the level one point zero. And uh, so there, those are the data sets. And then you can select what you want out of this list. And uh, it can create a script for downloading the data or at least a, 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 link, a pointer to the name of the file, the zip file that you would then put into the script. 
or put into the Jupyter notebook. Right, so this is the name dot zip that you care about. Is this making sense to you? Ah, uh, yeah, it's uh, clear to me now. Okay, good. Thank you so much. Sure. Any other questions? Mohammed has his name or his hand raised. Oh, great. Oh, there's a chat here. Uh, good evening. Uh, so, can you hear me? Yes. Cool. Good to know. So, uh, I would just come to your question again, uh, the person who asked it before. So, if you just watch the video, uh, I think uh, it's on the YouTube channel now, on the UNAFCO YouTube channel. And then you can see your instructor, uh, Harish, if I'm not wrong. Uh, he just showed us the, the region uh, or the website where we can download our SAR data sets. Uh, but the problem is that I was just uh, going through the video and it's like, uh, it has like a very low resolution. So I was not able to see. Uh, <laughs> so that's the issue. And I was working on the same thing and I just enc encountered the same problem. So uh, that was all. Yes, we, uh, we were not good at uh, maximizing the size of our windows when we did the recordings previous years. We're trying to do a better job this year with that. But let's see. This is, um, uh, let me see if I can, am I still sharing my screen? Maybe not, let me, oh yeah, I am. So let's see. Which video was that? That was the data download video? No, there was from 1.4, section 1.4, from yesterday, from the, from the last lecture. Oh, um, okay. Oh, okay. So let's see. Um, that would be, this yeah, one? the strip map. Okay, we're not going to watch the video, but let's see if uh, we can. Yeah, at, at the end, uh, he was just talking about where to download data from and how to do it. Yeah, that is very low resolution, isn't it? But was there a specific link? that you were looking for that he was talking about? No, that... he just showed us the, the web page, the, the website he was. Uh... So the homework was to run the same scripts yeah. on a different type of data set. Yeah. And then I think at the end, he just showed us the, the website. Maybe that was from the, I think maybe that was the ASF website and he was like, just download two SAR images and then uh, run the overall uh, scripts. Right, okay. Well, um, if it was the ASF website, then what I just showed you is yeah. probably what he showed you then. True. So you just pick your area, get a couple of scenes, download them or, or put the name of the file into the uh, script the way it was done for the Hawaii data and uh, you should be good to go. Cool. Yeah, but, but I'm not 100% sure whether it was the ESF website, but I would say yes, it was. So this is the video. Um, it actually looks pretty well resolved to me. So can you see my screen? Well, yes. Okay. Cool. So it's quite readable. Oh, this is Topsat. 
Why are we looking at top sap? That's not what we want. Yeah, that's true. We can just look around. Strip map. Pairwise processing with strip map. That's what we were trying to look at. Okay, I must have gone on to the next video by accident. Yeah, this one is fairly low resolution, you're right. Hi, Paul, uh, this is Harish. I'm here if there's a question for strip map. Sorry, I'm late. Well, there, the problem is uh, we did not do the downloading data um, tutorial the way we have in previous years. And uh, students are confused. The homework was to get their own data and run the strip map application on that, but they don't know how to download the data. So I was just telling them to go to the ASF website to uh, select their scenes and then put it in the zip file into the, uh, the download section, section of strip map app at the top. Uh, and Mohammed was just referring to last year's vi uh, the video that we link, but it's, as we can see, it's quite low resolution. So you just have to go by his words, not by what you can see. So we were just debating what the best way to get the students up to speed on that is. I already showed the ASF Vertex website and uh, demonstrated how to draw a region, select ALOS and get the list of scenes. Uh, but I didn't go all the way to the end and cut and paste some data sets into the script and show that you can actually download other data. So if you have any suggestions about how to get them up to speed quickly on that, that would be helpful. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, first of all, thanks. That's, 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 that's good. Usually I do that one myself as well. Um, uh, the Cesara software from UNAFCO, the repository is not, is, is taken down, I guess. Uh, so that's that's one other problem. But there is the Python API from um, uh, from ASF itself. We can use that one too. So I could maybe uh, today uh, we will post some simple Python script somewhere. Um, to, to... Uh, but the normal way is to, as you can, the, the vertex is showing now, right? The normal way is to go here and to select some scenes. Yeah. And there's a. If you add anything to the to the card, then go to downloads. Yeah. So here we'll add this guy to a card. Add 250 files to downloads. I don't know what. 250 we did oh no no you you probably have chosen have selected all of them right but all you need is the name right <laughs> uh, yeah but now it's difficult to know which one you want to process a pair with so they need they need to have a pair over the same frame same track no i know that uh, they can figure that out themselves they should be able to do that uh, from the tool, but okay. I just, uh, what we need in the script, if I go to the script, uh, where is it here? They need to know, um, basically yeah. the, uh, the zip file name. Why, why doesn't my script have yeah, if you go down a little bit more, there is a download W get. Ah, here we go. Yeah. yeah, they need to know this name. Yeah. So they can put it in here. Yes, that's, that's true. So that they should be able to get from. Uh, and this. Yes, yes. And also, if you. Uh, for for, for uh, another approach would be just if you click on download, it will give you options to download the data or download a Python script that you can run. You can download only the Python script. Uh, oh, that would be a little bit problem because you cannot copy it to the uh, OpenSAR lab. 
but but for your own use case that's very easy usually that's what i do right i usually do the download python script when i've done this so copy urls to clipboard what yeah. do those where is the where is the clipboard? Is that my clipboard? Let's see. Yeah. So um, here I just copied. Let me just. Um, how can I do this? You can't see my notepad. So let me stop sharing this and I'll start sharing my screen. Share. Okay, so what I did, let's assume that um, instead of doing what I did, which was to um, put into my cart all 250 scenes, let's suppose you had selected a couple of scenes that you want and you would place them into your cart. Then if you go to data down to downloads here, you would see uh, a list of just the scenes that you had selected, right? And then you would click on data download and then download Python script. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not what I wanted to say. I wanted to say copy URL. So if you copy the URLs to the clipboard, right there, I pasted from my clipboard into my notes. This is the list of files that I was put there from the clipboard. So uh, maybe it's too small for you to see, Let me make it bigger. Uh, how do I make these bigger? There. So uh, you, this should look familiar to you. These links are the links that you see in the strip map app notebook, right? It's got the A3 and the name of the file.zip. So this link is what you would stick into the notebook for the scenes of interest to do your processing. So the process is, if you're using this, not Cicera, which apparently doesn't work, is you go to Vertex, you select your region, you select your sensor, uh, you filter it on whatever characteristic you want. In this case, I think we selected raw data. You get your list of scenes that you want. Um, put the ones that you want in the cart. And then once you have the cart, you go to the downloads button, click on copy URLs. and put those, paste those, once you've copied them, you can paste them from your clipboard into the, a file that you can then put into strip map app. That should be a, a clear step-by-step -step procedure. Is that clear, what I just suggested? I think it is clear now. Okay, good. Mohammed, is that clear to you? Yes, it's all clear. Thank okay. you. Good. <laughs> Sorry, it takes me a while to re remember all the details, but. Okay, uh, by, by the way, I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, maybe very, very early question, but I, I feel that uh, to download this one, we need um, account, ASF account like in your, in your screen, you haven't signed in, but I guess we need to sign in or we need account. After the course, can I continue to use ASF accounts or, uh, or not? Yeah, so I haven't downloaded the data. I've just got the link. So maybe that's why I haven't signed it. I don't need to sign in. But the answer is uh, the ASF accounts for Vertex and Earth data. Those things last forever. Okay, so I can I can download and use the data from ASF later after the cost and I can- Absolutely, it. yes. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. The, the ASF uh, login should be uh, I believe just the Earth Data login. Earth Data login is for accessing data. It's not for um, 
running these uh, cloud instances that you're doing in the course. That's a different login. Okay, yeah. Thank you. All right, good. And maybe uh, during the first hour of the, of the um, course today from 10 to 11, Haresh, we should spend a little time um, on the data download part since that seems to be a stumbling block. Okay, sure. So just, just one more suggestion. Uh, if the users go, if you click on filters. So right now in this specific frame that you have chosen, it's over ocean. Yes. Uh, uh, so that's the part that they, you want them to play with it themselves, probably. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. But they have, once once they figure it out here, they can filter past start. That's the track number and the frame start, frame end. Yes. So you can, you yeah. can submit your search here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I could, for example, if I, can I click on this? Yeah. If I wanted this one, this is path 477 <laughs> and frame 200. So I could filter on 477 to 478 and frame only frame 200 or something like that. Actually, the, maybe it, I want to do it the other way around. Let's try that. So then by filtering on just the frame of interest, you see I limited the number of, of data sets to many fewer, and there seems to be a stack of 19. Some of these, I'm not quite sure. It's LBAN HH plus HV. I guess the ones that are HH plus HV have uh, colorized thumbnails. The ones that are just HH are black and white. So, and you can tell, does it say what mode it's in? FBS. So the first ones are FBD. FBD is um, the, is, that's the lower resolution mode. I forgot. FBS, FBS, wideband, probably not useful. See, I'm looking here at the B mode. ICE can handle combinations of FBS and FBD, right, uh, Harash? Uh, so. Yes. Yeah. So FBD is fine beam dual pole. As Paul said, the range resolution is uh, coarse. It's 14 megahertz data. So uh, FBS is single pole, but uh, better resolution. The range sampling is 20, uh, 24 megahertz. 28 megahertz. Sorry. 28 megahertz, yeah. So the single pole data is often what we use because it has good uh, bandwidth, but you can combine them in the ICE software to get a, uh, more options available to you. So there's quite a bit of data here over some frames in Vietnam. Obviously it's not covering the entire country though, so. Not sure what they focused on. There may be more data available elsewhere, just not in the ASF archive. ASF doesn't have all of the global data, I don't think. Okay, are there any que other questions on data downloading or other aspects of the time series? Uh, sorry, the uh, strip map app lecture? or the INSAR lecture. There is a question in the chat. Oh. Oh, you should use HH. Uh, so um, you should use HH for the 
processing, although you could use HV and see what it looks like. It should be interesting. But um, typically HH has better noise characteristics, brighter, it's a brighter image. And so the phase noise will be lower. And, but as we said, uh, you can combine the HH data from the FBS, which is HH only, with the uh, HH data from the FBD, which has HH and HV. The HH and HV data sets come in separate files. So you can just use the HH data from the HH plus HV data. All right. Hi, uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, sorry, so it's very basic and uh, very simple. My apologies. But I was uh, wondering, uh, I'm reading, um, going through this stuff for the first time. So I was looking at the phase rate and change rate equations. And there's this symbol psi with the underscript C and then with the underscript S. Uh, could you please clarify what that refers to? Yeah, those are just the slopes. So let me let me let me let me just make sure I your um, audio is not so great and the transcription at the bottom is not very accurate. So let me bring up the window. And make sure I understand your question. Uh, share screen again. And I think you were asking about the inter. Yeah, the slopes. Uh, where were the slopes? Here. You're asking about phi c. Yes. And phi s. Psi yes. Psi c and psi s. Those are just the local slope. How do we calculate that? How do you calculate them? Um, well, you can, you can, uh, you specify them, right? Whatever the slope on the surface is, that would be um, a number. If, if it's a flat earth, there's no relief, no hills, no mountains, then the slope would be zero. If there is a slope, if you're walking along and you're walking uphill and the angle is 10 degrees from the horizontal, then it would be a 10 degree slope. But, and the units of course would be okay. specified in radians if you're applying it. Well, I mean, you can, you can, oh, okay. you can calculate the 10 either in radians or in degrees, but it's a slope in some, in some angle. Oh, relative okay. to the horizontal. Okay, thank you. I, I was just wanted to clarify that. Uh, another question was that I saw that there's a lot of um, and, uh, unit conversion degree to radian. So this is perhaps a mathematical question, but if we're taking the tangent or the cosine or the sine, why are we changing it from degree to radian? Why are they changing from what to what? I missed that. I said, why are we changing it from degree to radian when we are taking the tangent or the cos or the sine? Uh, so, uh, I'm not sure how to answer that question. Um, so you, you calculate you know, the cosine or the sine um, are functions of angle and how you calculate that depends on, you know, your, your convention. So I don't, I don't fully understand your question. What about the cosine and sine and changing from degrees to radians exactly? How do you know whether to use degrees or radians when calculating cosine or sine? Is that your question? So, um, yeah, that could also be reworded as that. 
I was just wondering that um, it was all based on uh, triangulation and then just the sign laws and the cost laws. So I was just curious why we were changing in um, uh, degree to ready, considering that these were like analytical equations. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's really hard to understand you. Haresh or Lien, uh, Lien, can you catch the question? Uh, I am sorry. Um, it is unclear to me. Sorry. Um, can you please repeat? So I was just asking, uh, why are we changing the angle unit from degree to radian when calculating the tangent or the cosine or the sine in the phase rate equation? In the which equation? Which equation? The phase rate, phase rate equation. So you are saying to way, way to change the angle unit from degree to radian? Is that what you are asking? Well, it's just uh, whatever it's num. We are using Python NumPy, and uh, it accepts radian. So you have to give it radian. If there was a, if you would write an another tan or sine or cosine equation that would accept degrees, you would give degrees. But usually, in the programming languages, it's very common to give radian. Oh, oh, thank you so much for answering. Yeah, that was my question because I was just uh, curious why we were doing that. So I thought perhaps there's a mathematical reason behind it. Is there a specific code cell that you're talking about in the notebook? So, uh, for example, um, the I think in the INSAR notebook, there's just one code cell uh, in which we were can, uh, looking at the sensitivity of uh, phase to change in topography and then the change in line of sight displacement. So the sensitivity equation in this notebook. Yes. Oh, so this this code cell here? Yes. Ah, uh, okay. So um, this theta here, this is an angle. For convenience, I chose to allow you to type in an angle in degrees because most people think in terms of degrees better. But then I convert it to radians by multiplying by pi and dividing by 180 degrees, because there's 180 degrees in pi radians. So this gives you the angle in radians. And typically, cosine uh, uh, si trigonometric functions accept <clears throat> arguments that are in radians. So that's why we do this conversion here. And it's, as Haresh said, NumPy is defined that way. In Fortran, sometimes, um, if you ever used Fortran, there's basically a cosine which accepts radians. There's a cosine d function that accepts degrees. It depends on the implementation. But generally speaking, the cosine and the trigonometric functions are defined uh, at, with arguments that are in radians. Because they're based on complex exponentials and power series expansions and things like that. That all takes radians. Thank you. I just had these um, fairly basic questions. Yeah, sure. No problem. It's just uh, the issue was just understanding. Uh, it, you, you're very a little dim and uh, audio is not so strong. So it's a little hard to understand. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, just, I also have a question in the same notebook. Okay. So in the interferometric triangle part, that there is an equation about sine theta minus alpha. So in the denominator, shouldn't it be the parenthesis 
uh, the, rho, the rho plus delta rho is actually inside the parenthesis square, not at the end. Like bra brace and rho plus delta rho and brace and square minus rho square and minus b square. Okay, so uh, interferometric triangle, that's this one? Yes. This equation? Yes, in the denominator part. This should be squared? Like square rho plus delta rho square? Like rho, rho plus delta oh, rho. This should be two rho plus delta rho? No, 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 the upper part. Upper part. Yeah, the first two element. Oh. Uh, probably, yes. Maybe I forgot, <laughs> forgot a square there. Like there's a square at the end, but should I think it should be in the front. <laughs> uh, that's probably right. Yeah, let me. <laughs> I think that's probably right. I'll go back. This uh, I created this notebook from other slides and I probably forgot a term there. Yeah, I'll go, I'll fix this. Thank you. Very good, okay, uh, thank good you. catch. I didn't notice that. <laughs> thank you. Yes. All right. There's, I'm sure you'll find little transcription mistakes throughout these notebooks. So please keep asking questions, even if you think they're not very uh, good questions. It's probably a mistake that I made. So thank you for catching that. Any other questions? Actually, while we're kind of on the slide, I think I'm still having some trouble understanding uh, classic versus ping pong, especially in the concept of the, the test you're understanding question below. Um, okay. So. So we, let's just go through it then. Thanks. So um, you in, in the classic case, uh, following these arrows, you're, we're transmitting off of this antenna. It goes down and uh, hits the target and bounces back to that same antenna. But also you have a second antenna and it bounces back and hits that second antenna. So you've got um, one of the images is going to have a path length that is two times row one. The other one's going to have a path length that's, that's row one plus row two. So when you form the interferogram from those two, the path length difference is given by this, two pi over lambda times row one plus row two minus two pi over lambda times row one plus row one. And that gives then a delta phase of two pi over lambda times row two minus row one, which is your delta rho. So in this case, you get a P is equal to one because uh, there's only, it's just delta rho is just, in this case, you're transmitting off of this one and receiving off of the same one. And then on the next pulse, you would transmit off of the other antenna and receive on the other antenna. Then you would alternate back to this one and do the same thing. So you'd have to have twice the effective PRF for the system, pulse repetition frequency, but uh, you get basically two interleaved images. Uh, in this case, then the path lengths are two, delta, two row one and two row two. And so when you do this difference, you get four pi over lambda times that delta uh, rho. So P is equal to two. So does that, that yeah. make you sense know, uh, there? Yeah, that all checks. I think it was the description of the question that I didn't understand why it was a uh, uh, ping pong. 
Okay, so often when I do this, uh, we find that my, my thinking is not what the students think too. So that's good. What would be the value of P for an interferometer formed by a single radar system orbiting precisely enough to repeat, nearly repeat its track such that the interferogram is formed by comparing the first observation to the second? This is basically describing repeat pass interferometry. Right, so the, uh, the, this was a, it's not really a trick question, but it was supposed to emphasize the fact that in the choice between classic and ping pong, the ping pong methodology is really what you're doing for repeat pass interferometry. You're taking an image from one antenna, you're flying back and taking an image from basically a different antenna, we could say in the same fashion that you're doing it here with this case where you have two antennas at the same time. So ping pong is the methodology that we use for uh, repeat pass interferometry by, by, by fiat, by requirement. You cannot do this classic case in a repeat pass system because you only have one antenna at any one time available to you. So this was supposed to get you to think about what these equations mean in the context of a repeat pass system and pick the answer that should be D, I think. Yes, you can, you can, you can work your way there. It's C or D, <laughs> D and C gives you a red box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does that make okay. sense to you? Yeah, I think that was helpful. Thank you very much. Good. May I ask uh, another question regarding the test you're understanding for the baseline error? Sure. That's down here, right? Yeah. I, I think I get it, but I but didn't get the but didn't get it hundred percent like how does the full pine uh, order come from like from which term does this four prime okay well um the orbits are generally known to a few centimeters and very slowly over the orbit so what would be the nature of the baseline of the phase residual for a three centimeter baseline error if the radar wavelength is three centimeters. So which of these terms does that refer to precisely? It would be, would it be the DEM error term or the baseline error term? It should be the baseline error baseline term. Error. Yeah. So that's this calibration error term. Mm -hmm. And it's a fixed baseline error here. So um, you would argue, you could argue, since L is um, topography dependent, this is a little bit of a trick question to get you think about it. Um, L is topography dependent. So B is delta B is fixed. L is varying with topography. So you would you would expect that there is a error here um, in rho, which is proportional to um, the topography and so, so you distance, what's that the distance will change and then cause the like a corresponding phase turn is that yeah <laughs> yeah okay. but but really the the it is a the baseline error here is only a few centimeters so it's probably not really um the biggest error source. The bigger error source would be the fact that you would have, if you have a baseline error and you have a, um, your look vector changes from near range to far range in a systematic fashion. So if your baseline has a incorrect uh, uh, angle or length associated with it, then that baseline um, projection onto the ground will change systematically across range and you'll get a small phase ramp going across range uh, mm. 
based on that. So the, the, the dominant term with that small calibration error is most likely to be a phase ramp going across the image, which would, if you translate that into a height, if you're doing a height mapping, it would, it would translate into a tilt of the entire topographic surface, which would lead to you know, incorrect heights. And if you are not doing height, but you're doing phase, it will lead to a small phase ramp across the interferogram that you might interpret as some sort of you know, secular motion or something, but it's really just related to the baseline error. So I think the right answer on this one is C, although there are elements of D that are correct. <laughs> also, it's probably not the best worded question, but I, at least hopefully it gets you to think about it. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. That makes sense? Yes, thank Good. you. Uh, can I ask one more question, please? I have a, another telecon I have to go to that I'm leading. So um, we do have another hour of homework uh, discussion at 10 o'clock. So uh, Haresh, if you want to stay on, you can, but I've got to go. So we'll see you at 10 o'clock Pacific time and we can continue this for an hour or so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.